I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. So a request came in to do a video on how to convert unmanaged disks to managed disk. So this is a pretty easy process and it shouldn't take us more than a few minutes. So let's jump over to the Azure portal. Okay, and what we can see here is that I've got a resource group called unmanaged and in here we've got a bunch of VMs. So we've got a three tiered application, web app, database, and then three standalone VMs. Two of them are completely isolated and another one is inside an availability set. And then we go into uh, any one of these systems. Let's take VM number one here and we go over to disks. And we can see this disk is the only one attached to this particular VM. Okay, and inside the disk configuration, we can see the size of the disk, the IOPS limits, the type of caching, and also the VHD URI. And that tells us exactly what storage account this is stored in. There's the storage account name dot blob dot core dot windows dot net forward slash VHDs is the default container and then the name of the particular VHD file. So if we take a look at that real quick, we go to our storage account. Now this is a blobs storage account usually used for just uh, things like hosting VHD files. We go in the VHD container and we see that we've got our three disks. Okay, and then if we go back to this storage account. The other VMs are not in that storage account. Where are they? So let's go to disks and we see that this is in the other storage account that's in that resource group. So if we open that guy, we go to blobs, VHDs, and there are those disks. Now the reason for spreading them out is because of disk IO contention or you get the noisy neighbor syndrome where you get uh, a lot of activity happening on my database server which is then going to cause my other workloads to have a drop in performance. So these are some of the disadvantages to unmanaged disks. Moving over to managed disk will relieve this contention because all of the disks themselves have their own set of IOPS across storage accounts that Microsoft manages for you so that you don't have to worry about any of this going forward. So how do we do this conversion? Well, first let's look at the documentation. We go to products and let's just go into Windows Virtual Machines and we type unmanaged into the search bar here and we'll get to this particular doc. And this is going to give us the different methods of how to do this. So basically you can go through the planning stages here, basically making sure that you're mapping from unmanaged disk to managed disk properly. You're going to the right kind of disk, HDD, standard SSD, premium SSD, that kind of thing, as well as the right size so you get the right kind of performance IOPS. The couple other factors to consider here is one, if you are using VMs that do not have a statically assigned IP address from Azure, but you do care about what IP the VM has, then I suggest that you set a static reservation for those VMs before you start this process, because the first step in the process is to stop and deallocate the VM. When we do this, it is possible that the VM will come online and receive a new IP address. So if that is a concern, make sure that you set your IP addresses statically from Azure, not inside the operating system. The operating system should be set to DHCP only and always. When we set this static reserve, we set it from the Azure network interface card to have a reserved IP address. And then the other two things here to think about is if your VM is a standalone virtual machine or if it is in a availability set. So if it's standalone, then no problem. We can go ahead and execute this code, which we'll do in a minute and then you'll walk through that process. If you have an availability set, however, this is something that you would have chosen at the time of the VM being created. And this is because the availability set aligns to what we call fault domains and update domains. And this is when we do any patching or uh, maintenance on the servers, on um, the host servers themselves, and also if there is some kind of outage, some kind of issue in a particular rack. And when we build this, we align the storage for our unmanaged disk to certain availability sets and the managed disk to other availability sets. So we have to actually convert the availability set that you're in from being unmanaged to being managed. And that is what this SKU aligned flag does. When the VM is provisioned, it's provisioned to an availability set that is tied to the backend storage that is either managed or unmanaged. And we need to update that so that you can now be in managed. So, uh, and one other comment here on that is that you cannot mix states. 
So when you have a availability set with unmanaged disks, that whole availability set must be converted to managed disk. We cannot mix managed and unmanaged together because they're on different physical hardware in the back end. We're gonna look at how to do this in a few different ways. So we'll start off with VM number one here. Before we do, you see you've got a banner here. And this banner tells you, hey, you've got unmanaged disks. You need to convert these. So we could click on this and it'll bring us to this particular screen. Or we can go to disks and there is a migrate to manage disk button here and brings us back right to the same screen. And then we can hit migrate. Okay, so that VM is in the process of now migrating. If we do this uh, through code, now let's see, uh, we have VM number two here. So we'll do our second VM that is standalone. So here is shell.azure.com and based on using the RG name and VM name variables, I've created uh, some variables which I will paste here. And then we'll go back to here and copy the code and paste that. And our second VM should be off to the races. So let's go back to the first guy and we go back to disks and we see that this disk is now a managed disk. So it is that easy. It is one button click inside the portal in order to do that conversion. And if we go to number two here, number two is, uh, there we go, just finished. And so that is also now converted to a managed disk. So it is really that simple to do this. So let's look at uh, the other one. We had a VM inside an availability set. For the availability set conversion, what we need to know is the name of the availability set. And we can get this again from our documentation. Okay, so we need the name of the availability set here and the resource group where that is stored. So let me create those as variables and I will paste those. Okay, and once again, we could do this very simply through the portal. So I want to show you in the portal experience when you go to migrate to manage disk, it'll give you this error saying that we cannot convert this because it's in an availability set and you need to click here in order to convert the availability set, which is what we're going to do in our code. And then the command is going to do a lookup of that availability set and then it's going to do the update process so we'll paste that and that has now been updated so now we can do step number two okay and then we can do step number three okay and that process is now ongoing you can see there's uh, really a bunch of different ways that you could do this we can also uh, like I said go back through these and do them in the portal. There you go. That guy's going to convert. And you know, you could do this all day long and, and just keep on going. But uh, you get the basic point here. So all of our systems will be converted from unmanaged disk over to managed disk. And all of that uh, scripting for standalone VMs is here in the portal, as well as VMs inside availability sets. And the only other thing that you have to just be aware of and consider is that when you are converting these systems, that uh, if you have a statically reserved IP address, that you just need to be aware of that so you can reassign it appropriately. So I hope that you've enjoyed this really quick video on how to convert your unmanaged disk systems over to managed disk systems. Give us a comment below on if this was helpful to you. Don't forget to subscribe, click on the notification icon so you can receive our videos when they come out, which is roughly once a week. Don't forget to like the video. Happy learning.